Konnichiwa, minasan. Kono channel ue yokoso. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Merce Around the World video. I'm super excited to be making this video today. It is not a travel video, but I'm going to be talking about something else that is Japan related, and that is moving abroad, studying, and living in Japan. Deciding to study a language and moving abroad is a huge decision, and there are lots of logistics that go into this. So, I just want to share my experiences that I've had as I have done a year and a half of language school and I'm coming up on my two year mark here in Japan. Hopefully, this will be able to give anyone who is interested or thinking, dreaming about living abroad and studying Japanese a lot of information so that you can start your own journey. There are a lot of hoops to jump through, but the bottom line is if you're thinking of, if you're wanting to make it happen, I highly recommend this kind of experience. Not only can you learn the language, you can learn about yourself, you learn about different cultures, and I think it's just such a rich thing that if it's something that you're wanting to do, do it. It will be a lifetime experience that you won't look back on. There are a ton of topics to cover in this video. I will talk a little bit about my personal Japanese language background, why I wanted to go to language school, how I chose my language school, the process of working with the school to get your visa, what life at language school is like, as well as how much Japanese that I learned was it actually useful to go to language school, life after language school, as well as some other tips for studying Japanese and living abroad. Those will be sprinkled. Within the video. So it will be a lot of information, but I'll try to make it fun and informative for all of you. And if I leave anything out, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will answer them in perhaps another video. And if you want to watch more videos about living in Japan, traveling in Japan, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I release videos when I can. <laughs> be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the content. All right, let's learn about what it's like to learn Japanese in Japan. I first want to give a little bit of overview about my Japanese background. I didn't just come to Japan with no experience at all, so I want to make it a little bit clear. I studied Japanese for a year when I was in college in order to go to Kyoto for a study abroad trip, so it was my first taste of learning Japanese. However, after graduating, I didn't use any Japanese at all, and so I went three years without speaking anything. I pretty much forgot all of it, lost all of it, it was gone. But I found that the Japanese came back much quicker and I felt that things just started to make sense a little bit better the second time around, which was exciting. And this was especially for verb conjugations and kanji. So my piece of advice here is even if you've tried learning a language or Japanese before and you didn't quite make it to your goal, it's never too late to pick it up again. You just need to take that first step and start again. And for those who are beginning to learn Japanese for the first time, you should be super excited. It's a beautiful language. It is difficult though, um, at least that's my personal opinion, but you will learn so much about Japanese culture that you just need to take that first step and start learning. Why I wanted to go to Japanese school. After graduating, I worked in a job for a couple years. I found it really fun and exciting, but eventually as I was working, I started to get that feeling that I wanted a new challenge and adventure in my life. And what better way to challenge yourself and find adventure than to move to a new country? The best time is now, or then, and I started to really dream about picking up and moving from the United States to a different country. I chose to go back to Japan of all other countries because I had had such great experiences during my small trips there previously. I really enjoyed the culture and the food and because I was looking for something so different than Western culture that I knew it would allow me to see new things. And Japan also has such interesting developments in design, which is my area of background that it would potentially allow me to have future job opportunities should I decide to stay in the country longer. Once I decided on Japan as my dream location, I had to start researching how to get there. And this means what kind of visa will you be on when you are in that country? I did lots of research, so I'll give a brief overview of several of the visas that might work for your situation. The first is a tourist visa, and this is the most standard visa. Usually, if you are a tourist coming to the country, you are given this visa, and it is for a max duration of three months, so 90 days, three months. During COVID times, this was not available as Japan closed its borders to tourists, but in standard times, this is a great visa that is for people who are trying to come to Japan to travel and enjoy and have a temporary stay in the country. Now on this visa, you are not allowed to work and is a visa that cannot typically be extended because this visa was so temporary, it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So tourist visa was not for me. 
The next visa is a work visa, and on this visa, you are allowed and must work in Japan, but you need a company to sponsor or vouch for you to get this visa. I have found that the language barrier is a huge barrier. Most companies that operate in Japanese are looking for a high level of Japanese, which means the Japanese language proficiency test or JLPT N2 level or native speaking. So if you are a beginner, if you don't have Japanese foundation, this could be a bit difficult. So because of this, the work visa was also not for me, at least at this time. The next visa is the student visa. Ding, ding, ding. And with this visa, you are committing to attend a language school and to learn Japanese language. You have attendance policies and you need to reach a standard of Japanese proficiency by the end of your program. But overall, it is much more attainable and much more flexible. The positives of this visa is that it can be for one to one and a half to two years, depending on your program. Plus, if you're someone who needs a motivation and a reason, then those are kind of built into place with this visa of getting you to learn the language and progress. I found that Japanese language school is less rigorous than college. You have less hours, you have more flexibility, you don't have as much homework. So there was a lot of free time when I was a student and this can be used for self-studying to boost your Japanese skills outside of the classroom. It can be used for travel. It can be used for making friends and building a community and overall just living and enjoying life in Japan. So I eventually decided that of these three visas, going the student route made the most sense for me. Learning Japanese would allow me to connect with locals as well as give me a basis for Japanese should I want to work in Japan in the future. Additionally, having a year to year and a half to just live in Japan would be kind of like a test run to see, do I like living in this country? Do I think it's something that I want to continue doing without having commit fully to a company or a job? So bottom line for this is to assess your situation and ask yourself, why do I want to study abroad? Then look at the available options and choose the visa route that makes the most sense for you and your goals. How I chose language school. So I decided that I was going to go the student visa route. It just made the most sense for my goals and what I was envisioning for my time in Japan. How do you choose your language school? Uh, there's a lot of money that goes into going to language school and you're going to be at that school for a long period of time. So you want to make a good decision when it comes to your language school. I turned to Google for this research and I looked at reviews, forums, videos of people's experiences to try and really get a picture of what the different schools look like. I sent emails of interest to the schools and evaluated how timely and informative their responses were. Several key factors that went into my decision when choosing schools were class size, demographic of students, the teaching focus, the staff support, and the location of the school. Now, when it comes to class size, I've always found that when learning a language, the smaller is better. My school was capped at eight students per class, and I find that small class size are really a lot better for helping you learn the language more quickly. You get more direct contact with the teacher. It's easier to ask questions that you may have. So having a class size that is relatively small is something that I was looking for. Another important factor is the demographic of other students. There are some schools that are catered towards more Asian uh, as a first language speaking students and a lot of these students might already have a basis in kanji or Chinese characters and this just means that the schools they won't teach the fundamentals of kanji and this can be really hard for students who come from Western or European backgrounds where kanji is completely new. I was looking for a school that was more catered toward Western and European demographics as I needed more of a kanji focus in class and it would have been very difficult to me if it was a program that jumped right in assuming that I had a kanji foundation when I did not. The next section is staff support and I didn't realize how important this was until I got to Japan but I was really glad to find a school that had great staff support. Having staff that supporting you your entire journey, not just getting you to come to the school but while you are a student as well, just can really improve your life once you get here. There are certain things like extending your visa, finding housing, opening a bank account that if you just have someone who is there to help you, it is a load off your shoulders and so much easier than having to figure out everything by yourself. The next thing that is important is the teaching focus of the school. There are some schools that are catered towards passing the JLPT. There are schools that are catered towards helping students get a job or go into higher education. And then there are schools that are more 
catered towards teaching you about Japanese culture and the language holistically. So knowing what your goals are will be very important for deciding what kind of school you want to go to. And the final thing that went into my decision was location. I had originally looked into the big cities like Tokyo and Osaka because these were the cities that I knew and they have a huge number of language schools there. But as I continued to research, I realized that being outside of these big and popular cities would actually probably be more beneficial for me and my language learning experience. And the reason for this is that outside of the main cities, you have less people who speak English, you have less foreigners in general. So when you start interacting with the locals, they will be more likely to speak to you in Japanese rather than speaking to you in English. You'll be more forced to use a language in everyday life and I think that is one of the best things that can happen for you. The school that I went to is in Fukuoka which is on the island of Kyushu. It was actually a part of Japan that I had never been to before so after researching it I got really excited because it's known for its food, it has a very close proximity to other countries in Southeast Asia and it also has beautiful nature and just a lot of things that you can do that are outside of what people standardly or typically think of Japan. Getting your visa. So you've decided to go to language school, you've decided on your school, now how do you get your visa that will actually allow you to go to Japan? And this is where your choice of school is important because you'll be working hand in hand with them to submit documents and there'll be lots of communication necessary during the visa process. The application deadlines will vary school to school, but it was generally about four to five months before the start date that you need to start applying for your visa. Once I found my school, I filled out a form about my interest. Then I was sent an invoice. I needed to accept the offer from the school to officially register with the school and begin the visa process. Once I had committed to going to that school, I had to fill out an application form with a lot of basic info. This was sent to the school and the school submitted all of these documents on my behalf to the embassy in Japan to apply for a COE or certificate of enrollment. It took a long time to receive the COE and this is where a lot of the waiting happens during the process, but eventually the school notified me that they had received the COE from the embassy and it was at this time that I needed to pay the school my tuition fees. It was also at this time that I booked my flights to Japan. It was about two months before flying out and it was the first time that I booked a one-way ticket and it was extremely exciting and I started to finally feel like it was actually happening. So the school in Japan sent me the COE through mail and once I got it, that was something that I had to take along with my passport and a visa application form to the embassy or consulate in my area. It took one to two weeks to receive my visa from them. So you have to go back multiple times to complete the process. But once I got that visa in hand, it was extremely exciting. I was going to be off to Japan and starting this language learning adventure. The bottom line for this section is to brace yourself because the visa process is long and tedious. There are so many documents that you need to gather to show your finances, to show your intent and reasons for wanting to study. But once you get all of those together, make sure to double double check because you don't want to have any delays because of errors. But once you get that visa, you have your ticket to go to Japan. What is life like at Japanese language school? You got the visa and you made it to Japan, it's time to start your classes. What is it like to study Japanese in Japan? Some of this information is specific to my particular school, but a lot of it is also much more general and applies to Japanese language schools in all of Japan. You will have an attendance policy and a standard of Japanese that you need to achieve by the end of the program. At my school, we had four 50-minute classes a day with five to 10 minutes of break in between. My school had a system where class times could vary throughout the day and even week to week. Other schools work their schedules a little bit differently, but this is just something that you want to be aware of when you are applying to your schools. We focused on the four skills, which are reading, writing, listening, and speaking. At my school, we used a dedicated textbook for two of the classes and then would study the remaining skills in the other two classes. We did a lot of role play and working with other classmates to really try to boost our speaking ability. There was very light homework. It was about one page a day reviewing what we learned in the textbook. I highly recommend doing self-learning on your loan outside of the classroom to really build a strong foundation. And this could be interacting with locals, going out to bars and restaurants, 
or just spending more time studying a little bit more kanji on your own. I have a full blog post about some of my best resources and study tips that I will link below, but be sure to check that out if you're looking for different ways to learn the language. At my school, we had mini vocab tests week to week, as well as larger tests that were based off of the textbook that we used. If you participated in class and did the homework, it was pretty much not a problem at all to do well. There's a speaking portion of the test and in higher levels, we had a writing section as well. So you need to do well on these tests in order to continue to the next level and progress within the school. But if not, you will have to retake some of the classes to brush up on skills that you are not as strong in. The school I was at did not traditionally teach specifically to the JLPT or the proficiency test that I've been mentioning, but because during my time there were a lot of students who were interested in taking the test at higher levels, they did cater a bit of classes before the test to really focus directly on test materials. So we used JLPT practice books, we did mock tests, and had a lot of sample questions to do in order to get us comfortable and ready for the test. Outside of the class, uh, the school organized cultural events on holidays and throughout the week there were other events that you could participate in as the school had affiliations with local Japanese schools and programs in the area. These were canceled pretty much when I was in school because I was in school all of COVID. So my experience is not typical, but is something that you should look into if you are interested in having these kind of added experiences while you are in your program. In terms of breaks and vacations, being on a student visa, you have a lot of breaks, which is great if you are looking to spend that time traveling around Japan or doing things outside of the classroom. In summer, we had a six week vacation. In spring and winter, there was two week vacations. And in fall, there was a one week vacation with national holidays, spread out between these and so I had a lot of time during these breaks to explore and really see more of Japan than had I just been on a single tourist visa. When you're on a student visa you are allowed to work it's up to 28 hours per week but your work cannot impact your attendance or your grades. Being a student, you have your structured day in class depending on your school, but afterwards you have so much time to do what you want, part-time job, extra study, all of that. So it's really cool you get to craft your own life when you are a student here in Japan. How much Japanese did I learn? I studied Japanese at a language school for a year and a half. I started as a beginner, but as I mentioned, I wasn't an absolute beginner. I had had some previous Japanese studies beforehand. So for me, it was a little bit quicker to pick up and start because I had a foundation that just needed to be dusted off. When I started school, I started with the Genki books. I started around chapter seven in Genki one. After Genki one, I progressed to Genki two. After Genki two, I went to what we called the pink book and the green book, which is a different textbook series, but is geared towards intermediate. After the pink and green, we started working with separate grammar books. So try three and try two. After that, there were a mix of JLPT books that we also used when we were studying uh, specifically for the JLPT. This included new Kanzen Master series and Somatome series. And I have links to these, all these textbooks I'll put them below so you can check them out yourself. So there, there were a lot of textbooks, but even with this outside of class, I did a lot of supplemental language learning by myself. I studied Wani Kani for kanji, I bought my own JLPT book, and I started watching Japanese news and reading. So you have a good basis of what happens in school. It's for four-ish hours a day of listening and speaking, but if you really want to boost your Japanese, try to take advantage of everything that's out there in the in the world of Japan to boost your language learning even more. At this point, I feel pretty confident being able to talk to someone for the first time. I can start a conversation and talk about the basics. I do feel like I'm better at listening than speaking, but I'm working on continuing to improve both of these. I did have some interviews in Japanese when I was job hunting, and these were very difficult. I don't think that I'm quite at the level to be able to conduct business fully in Japanese, and I just felt like in those situations, I was never able to fully express my opinion or my thoughts in more complex matters when it came to business. I definitely feel like I have a good foundation. I've learned what to study, how to study, and now I can definitely see that I've made progress. When I first started, I was reading graded readers very slowly, and now I'm able to read Harry Potter in Japanese for fun. I used to listen to the textbook audio tracks and kind of not understand what they're saying, but now I'm able to listen to Japanese podcasts and Japanese news and pick up a lot more than before. So seeing this improvement is really exciting for me. I started language school in January and in December, I took the JLPT N3 for the first time and I luckily passed it. 
it was very exciting and then after that six months later seven months later in july i took the n2 and recently passed that as well i did a year and a half of language school and got to n2 level which took i won't lie a lot of work and outside study but I'm here to say that it is possible. The next section is about life after studying at a Japanese language school. After language school, you have two options. That is to stay in Japan or to go back to your home country. Going back to your home country is a little bit self-explanatory, but if you want to stay in Japan, that's going to take a lot more planning and is actually something you will want to be thinking about months, months, months before you actually graduate. And it's because attaining that visa or applying to the next job or applying to semongakko which is trade school or university requires such a long lead time and there are very specific process that comes with those things so the better idea you have of what your vision is after language school i highly encourage you to research that and to get on the ball of figuring out how to make it happen the idea of life after Japanese school, fighting visas, is probably a whole nother video topic, so I'm not going to go more into depth there. It's just a topic that I would really recommend people going to language school to start thinking about because one and a half years, one year, it goes by so fast. So fast. Everyone says it and it's always true. So just think about it so that you can be prepared for the next step in your life. Finally, should you study abroad in Japan? If you are intent on learning the language, yes, you should. The best way to learn a language is to be in that country itself. You see signs in kanji, you hear people's conversations on the street, you're forced to read menus and to interact, and if you really want the best Japanese learning, I recommend coming to Japan and just seeing what it's like, and you just get a richer cultural experience, and things are just, things are just better. <laughs> Um, if you're looking to use the language as a stepping stone for finding future work in Japan, I also recommend it just because so many companies have a high level of Japanese language that is needed to work there that the better and faster you can build your foundation, the easier it will be to get that job in Japan. Also, starting on a student visa and doing a year of learning will give you time to really see if you like the culture, if it fits. It also gives you time to build connections, which are very important here for finding future work and just friends and having a good time in general. So if you're looking to experience actually living in Japan for more than just a tourist visa, the student route is a great way to go. It'll allow you to experience a different culture, to learn about yourself, to figure out what you want to do, and to also just give you that foundation of Japanese that can only help you in your future. I hope this video has given you um, some valuable insights into what it is like to move abroad and to study Japanese. I'm sure there are lots of questions, so please throw them at me. I would love to be able to answer them if I can. I also just want to give so much encouragement to anyone who's thinking about taking this leap of faith because I believe it is such a valuable experience and something that is worth the time and effort to get here. So yes, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any upcoming videos. I also have a website about traveling in Japan, living in Japan that has articles on studying for the JLPT, best resources for Japanese. So be sure to check that out. I'll leave a link below. I really appreciate you guys watching this and I hope to see you next time. Jamata!